But who do you think will win the wooden spoon this year? What's going on there? I I don't want to say North Melbourne. I think they'll improve. I think the two front runners for me would be Hawthorne. Well, Collingwood could be down there too, but I, I'm kind of backing their good players in to win them a few games. Right. So I think Hawthorne will be down there. And honestly, Gold Coast might too. They might start the season really well. But compared to other teams in the league, I right. think I'd I think I'd place them down there too. Right. Okay. What about you? So I think for last spot, there's really two teams I look at. For starters, Gold Coast are gonna win more games than we expect them to win this year. They have a very established midfield now. Like their oh, midfield true. is greatly improved. Yeah. But if you're looking at Hawthorne and North Melbourne, there is nothing about either of those two teams that is established. For oh, starters, no, not at all. North Melbourne have four players that, like, seriously, they're, like, tossing around. They have, like, four solid Ruckman on their list. <laughs> like, they have four Ruckman, and they can't play them all. They want to play Coleman Jones and Goldstein, but then you got that Cherry guy who dominated yeah. preseason. You got the guy they took at one in the midseason draft who teams were talking about taking a, as a, fir- a late first in this year's draft if he didn't get taken in the preseason. In the mid- apparently mid-season. he's supposed to be a real long term prospect. Like they weren't expecting him to play for quite some time when they picked him. So yeah, but you've got all sure these players, and North are just sitting here like, well, who do we play? Because we can't play them all. But they've only got one good key forward and. If you were to ask me a good key backman for North, I think of Mackay, and I think of Mackay, and I, I think of Mackay. <laughs> Who do, else do they have? Yeah, well, without Tarrant, they might be left real depleted down back, and they might concede some pretty big scores this year when you and think about it. Apparently, they're playing Goldstein as like, um, like a 70-30, 70% forward, 30% rock. But I'm I'm yeah. sitting here like, dude, if you want to play Goldstein, you've held on to him for much longer than we expected. I think you got to play him full time forward. Like they have yeah, young Goldstein's upcoming ruck getting on now, and they want to play Coleman Jones full time ruck. Like in order to do that, you have to play Goldstein as a full time forward because you got younger ruckmen as well to progress. You know, progress, and they're just not going to. And I I still rate Goldstein. I'm not sure how much I'd rate him as a forward. I don't think I'd rate him as highly as Coleman Jones as a forward, but they're going to be playing Coleman Jones full-time in the ruck. Do you see Coleman Jones being an elite ruckman in the AFL, or could you see him being more of an elite forward? Because I don't know what I see him more as. I I don't know if he'll reach elite either way. I think ruckman... Right. I th- I think there's just so many great forwards that you'd almost have to say ruckman. But he kicked five goals in his first game back as a Tiger. Yeah. In only his second game ever, he kicked five snaps. Why is he yeah. not a forward? I know. I Because I just said I rate him a lot more mm. as a forward than Goldstein. And I, if they're going, to, I would play him forward instead of Goldstein, obviously. And Goldstein's still going to be playing. I don't know. He's, Goldstein's like 33 now. Yeah. Oh, older. It's, 100% yeah, older. It's, it's real confusing when you think about it. They've got Larky down there. They've got Zerha. Yeah. Do you have North Melbourne as last, do you think? Because I don't. Even though we said I all don't. these interesting things about them being we like wh- what their stance is, they just need to prove me wrong. Really, like one game of proving me wrong with like four Ruckman playing in the team, then we'd be cool. The team I have finishing last, I think, is the obvious one that a lot of people haven't talked about. I saw this um, video of people saying, who's going to win the wooden spoon? And I saw too many people saying Adelaide, a a bunch of people saying Collingwood and a bunch of people saying North. Bro, Hawthorne have the worst young core in the league. They have the worst Uh, young core in the league. No doubt about it. Quite some margin, to be honest. This is like their first year. They're like a solid top 10 pick. Like Granger Barris, bro, 
what what was that pick? Well, yeah, I mean, he's going to take some time. He's a big man, but obviously we haven't seen anything yet. They had the only him. established thing they had was like back pockets, medium sized <laughs> backmen, and they took a medium sized back pocket with their six pick or whatever they yeah. had. Yeah. So I yeah, as I said before, I think Hawthorne will be like they should be down there. I they could surprise and win some games with That's what we Gunston and Bruce or whatever. Gunston's playing a bit of back this year, I think, from what I've heard. Is he? Yes, from what God. I've heard. Could be wrong, but I mean, I used to rate Mitch Lewis up forward for some reason. <laughs> but uh yeah, Hawthorne should be should be down there competing for the wooden spoon, considering how much other teams have improved and yeah. they've been left behind and obviously haven't got Clarko anymore. Plus, they have players there that know they don't ne- they're not needed, they're not wanted. Bro, they put mm. Jaeger O'Meara and Tom Mitchell all on the trade dead like the trade uh <laughs> block and yeah. didn't manage to trade one of them. <laughs> yeah. They Hawthorne out of all the teams, I, I wouldn't trust them at all. <laughs> yeah. Colin would have too many good young players to not snatch up some games. Plus yeah. too many good players. Darcy Moore, Jeremy Howe, solid players, dude. They are And Pen- Pendles can still play well. Yeah. Dugowie's going to impact games. Taylor Adams is, is a pretty good player. <laughs> yeah. He's he's not like going to win or lose them games, but he's going to be a real solid player for them. And but, they've still got yeah. good role players like Adam Trelaw, Jane Stevenson, <laughs> uh, two whatever R two D two dude I traded. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bro, no, that off season was just hilarious. Funny. And then the guy dipped like six months later. He was like, Sorry, yeah, guys. <laughs> what was his name? Ned Guy. He was. Guy. He went on a. He, he went on the Fox most footy. iconic Collingwood official ever. He's more iconic than Eddie Maguire, hundred percent. Bro, he went on. He went on Fox Footy and said that those decisions weren't made based on the salary cap. <laughs> like that's just a straight lie, bro. Do you remember the they they told um. They told the, uh, I don't remember who they told this, but Adam Trelaw said this on an interview that they spanned the story like he was depressed and that that's yeah. why they were like getting rid of him because he had like mental health issues, all this stuff, wasn't happy at the club. And Trelaw goes, the only thing good in my life, he's like, the only thing good in my life was the club. Yeah, didn't Trelaw obviously, <laughs> yeah, but Trelaw obviously loves the club. He came yeah. out recently and said he doesn't yeah. hold any grudges against them or anything like yeah. that. I think he said he, he was having just some personal issues that just got turned into like a way bigger thing than what that what it actually was, and that's pretty messed up by a club to do that. Collingwood, yeah, uh, real messed up. Anyway, I think so. What what are you saying? I'm going Hawthorne to win the Warden Spirit. North Melbourne's my second option. I yeah, I'll also go Hawthorne, and then either Gold Coast or North Melbourne for the second option. Right, right, all right. I I don't trust Gold Coast at all. Still, is, is I there... I rate I rate a lot of their players, but True. without Ben King, yeah. Is there any other AFL conversations you want to bring up? What is there anything floating around in Kenny D's mind? You know, does he keep his mind that needs to be talked about? Because I kind there... of pulled that Jack Graham thing out of my asshole because there is nothing going on in the AFL right now. Yeah, I know it's like. Once the season gets started, the stories will start flowing and we'll actually have something to base the team, yeah. like what we're actually talking about based on how they've performed on the field, even mm. after the first round. But up until then, it's really tough. But obviously, really excited for the season to start. So many teams have high expectations. It's going to be such an open league yeah. uh, this season. So <laughs> the race for the top eight should be really interesting. Right. Right. 